Kaiorite friends, welcome to Classics in Color, your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and today we're going to be talking about the shaming and mutilation of female genitalia in the ancient world. A desire known to no one. Freakish, novel. Among all animals, no female is seized by desire for female. So that is a quote from Ovid, and hopefully from that quote, you get an idea of the disapproval that people in the ancient world generally had towards lesbians. Now, most people at this point are aware that there was quite a bit of homosexuality going on in ancient Greece and Rome, and so it's reasonable to ask if they were so fine with guy-on-guy -guy stuff, but then why do they have a problem with lesbians? And we've talked about this a few times on this channel, but let's do it again. Ancient sexuality didn't have as much to do with straight versus gay as it did with top versus bottom. So if you are of a particular social status, then it is expected of you to always be a top in any sexual encounter you're in. You better be penetrating, you better not be giving them oral sex, and you better be the one pursuing and initiating things. It is taboo and you are going to be shamed if you participate in any bottomy kind of behavior. And of course, people of higher social status are adult male citizens, right? People of status, not slaves. And then people of lower status are females, children, and slaves. And if you are of that lower status, then it's expected of you to always bottom and you will be shamed if you top, penetrate, pursue in any way. So in male-on-male -male relationships in the ancient world, generally one of them will be an adult and the other will be a child and or adolescent and or slave. And so that doesn't violate your top bottom rules, right? They can fulfill both of those roles without leaving their top or bottom space. But in a female-on-female -female relationship, there's a bit of a dilemma because women are supposed to be bottoms no matter what stage of their life they're in. So it doesn't matter how old one of them is, they're always supposed to be bottoms. And so if they're in a relationship, you've got a problem with the top bottom rules. And so you generally see a stigma or a disapproval of lesbian relationships when they come up in literature, often they're ignored, but if they are brought up, it's generally not in a very nice way. So lesbians are generally given a hard time. They're portrayed as overly aggressive physically, but also sexually. Women in the ancient world are supposed to be very demure, very shy about sex, not have too much of a sex drive. But these lesbians are portrayed as out there trying to get some and pursuing people. And that is definitely bad, right? And then the other stereotype about lesbians is that they, for the most part, have larger than usual clitorises. In case you're wondering, I'll give you a couple words in Latin for clitoris. So from Hippocrates, we have columella. So that is a more medical-ish term and it means little pillar, <laughs> which is kind of cute. And then we also have landica, which is the swear word, the dirty word, right? You don't use that in polite conversation. So. With that said, let's take a look at a quote where someone is describing a lady with a larger than usual clitoris. An immensely great clitoris occurs in some women. The presenting problem is shameful impropriety. According to what some people report, some even have erections similar to men on account of the part and are eager for sexual intercourse. Pliny the Elder also says that in a few women, the genitals have a monstrous resemblance to male genitals. So in both of these quotes, you get an idea of how people in the ancient world are aware of clitoromegaly and they do not like it. They associate it with all kinds of things that they think of as bad. So enlarged genitals are seen as a sign of enlarged or heightened sexual drive, and also that one likes to have inappropriate toppy relationships, right, with one's lovers and especially with other women, so lesbian relationships. And to get an idea of that association between large genitals, lesbians, let's take a look at everyone's favorite, Marshall. I never saw you close to men, Basa, and no rumor gave you a lover. You were always surrounded by a crowd of your own sex, performing every office with no man coming near you. So I confess I thought you a Lucretia, which is code for a very noble woman. 
But Bassa, for shame, you were a fornicator. You dare to join two cunts, and your monstrous organ feigns masculinity. So he thought that this lady, Bassa, was just very demure, very chaste, right? Didn't want to have sex with anyone, but it turns out she's just a giant lesbo. And so as a consequence of that, he accuses her of having a monstrous organ. It's been fun and games in this video so far, but I will admit when I read this next passage, it was pretty painful. So it comes from a medical author, Serenus, specifically his gynecaea or on gynecology. And this particular passage describes how to perform a clitoridectomy, which is a surgical intervention to reduce the size of said monstrous member. Concerning an immensely great clitoris, an uncouth size is present in certain clitorises and brings women into disorder by the deformity of the private parts. As most people say, the same women affected by the lust or erection of typical men take on a similar desire, and they approach sexual intercourse with men only under duress. If it comes to an operation, the woman is to be placed lying on her back with thighs closed, lest the viscera of the vagina become distended. Then the excess part is to be held in place with a small forceps and cut back with a scalpel in proportion to its unnatural size. I suppose I'm grateful at least that he says if it comes to an operation, sort of implying that it's not the default or it's not mandatory to perform this on people, but still ah, very unpleasant. So there you have it, folks, this week's video. Thank you so much for stopping by. Special thank you as always to subscribers and to Patreon members. And I hope to see all of you again next week. Karate.